Good morning, Tigers. This is Mrs. Martin here to talk to you about cellular division. We're going to review mitosis mostly as a way for you to understand meiosis, which is how individuals in a species increase their genetic variation to be passed on to their offspring. This allows species to survive threats if everyone has the same genetic makeup and components with no variation. They run the risk of a single threat taking out the entire species. By the end of this lesson, you should be comfortable with the key terms of meiosis, diploid cell, haploid cell, and homologous chromosomes. All cells need to make sure that when they create new cells that they have the right number of chromosomes and that all the organelles are also in that cell so that the cell can do the job that it is assigned. Every cell in the human body has a different job with different roles so that when the cells divide in this process called mitosis, they need to make sure that the new cell has all the machinery that it needs. When a new organism is being created in sexual reproduction, this process uses meiosis. When cells have a complete set of the chromosomes, they are called diploid cells. All human cells are diploid unless they are a sperm or an egg. In a human cell, the complete set is 23 pairs for a total of 46 chromosomes. So normal cells have 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. However, when the sperm and the egg are made, they only want to donate half those chromosomes, and this cell is called haploid, half the number of chromosomes, 23 chromosomes in the sperm, 23 chromosomes in the egg. The picture shown here is a, a photograph from the National Institute of Health showing what happens when a cell goes crazy and is uncontrolled division. It is also known as cancer. Let's look at what the cell does during its lifetime called the cell cycle. This is how cells live and divide. You can see from the diagram on the right side, but the cells spend most of their time in interphase. Interphase is split into three parts, growth one, synthesis phase, synthesis means to create, and growth two. Cells of the human body, as we just stated, go through mitosis, unless it is a sperm or an egg in sexual reproduction, it goes through meiosis. Let's look at interphase. This is where the cell spends most of its time. In the first area called G1 or growth one, the cell is very active. It duplicates all its organelles in its cytoplasm before it enters the synthesis phase. This is where the DNA is copied. It is preparing for the cell division it makes a copy of itself. They are held together at the centromere and they are called sister chromatids. Then it enters growth too, where more enzymes and proteins are made. The centrioles replicate and large amounts of ATP energy are made so that the cell prepares for division. Mitosis. This is cell division of all cells except for the sperm and the egg. It starts with a diploid cell. Do you remember what a diploid cell is? I hope you're thinking that it has a complete set of chromosomes. We call this cell the parent cell. It goes through PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Those are the phases of mitosis. But you see here prometaphase. This is often shown because there is such a big jump between prophase and metaphase. You'll sometimes see prometaphase. And cytokinesis is always linked with telophase because cytokinesis is how the cell pinches the membrane off and creates those two daughter cells. Prophase is the first phase. In prophase, the chromosomes condense and move to the poles. Nuclear envelope breaks apart so that the DNA can move to the middle in the next part of mitosis called metaphase. You'll see here what's called the mitotic spindle. The spindle will connect to those chromosomes with these fibers. These are the centrioles that will move to the poles and pull the DNA apart. Before that happens, they line up on the metaphase plate. It's almost like an equator of the earth, but an equator of the cell called the metaphase plate where all 46 chromosomes in the human cells will line up with their sister chromatids. Then it enters anaphase where the two sister chromatids split. 
They move to the opposite poles by these fibers shortening and moving towards the centrioles, and you'll see that the cell begins to elongate before it enters the last phase called telophase. Telophase is where the nuclear envelope reforms. Once the nuclear envelope reforms, proteins are made to help with this cleavage furrow and cytokinesis, which is the cytoplasm making two new cells. Now it's time for you to practice. Look at these phases of mitosis. Can you label this first phase, then the next, then the next? Pause the video and see if you can come up with the correct order. Now that you're back, let's check how you did. Did you start with the cell and interphase? You know it because the DNA is uncondensed. Then it goes to prophase, metaphase along that metaphase plate, pulled apart sister chromatids in anaphase, and that cytokinesis, cytokinesis pinching the membrane off, the membrane reforming around the nucleus for telophase and cytokinesis. Let's start with meiosis. This is how the sex cells are made. Remember, the sex cells are used to make a new organism. In the humans, it is the sperm and the egg. You start with all the chromosomes, a diploid cell. By the end of the two divisions, you will have four cells, but they will be haploid with half the DNA as the original diploid cell. Meiosis includes two divisions to end up with four cells at the end. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase are the four phases that each division goes through, so you'll see them labeled as prophase one and prophase two, and so on. Chromosomes in prophase one do condense, the nuclear envelope breaks down, but a cool thing occurs right here called crossing over. This is how genetic variation happens within the species. You'll see here homologous chromosomes align next to each other. In prophase one only, the chromosomes cross over and it's a quick little chemical reaction that breaks these bonds and reforms them to end up what's called non-recombinant chromosomes. You see the ABC labeled here with capital and lowercase so that you can see the parts that are exchanged between the chromosomes. This creates genetic variation so that the next species might even be more able to adapt to new environmental pressures and pass those adaptations on to their offspring. After prophase, just like in mitosis, metaphase one occurs. They line up on the metaphyseal plate the centrioles with the spindle fibers pull them to opposite poles. The sister chromatids, however, are still attached and they move to the poles. Telophase occurs, the nucleus reforms, cytokinesis pinches the membrane and makes the two daughter cells, but then we enter the second phase of meiosis. You'll see the second is notated in the phases with a Roman numeral two. Cells that are undergoing rapid meiosis may not decondense their chromosomes in telophase, so that in prophase, they're still condensed. Some cells take as little as two hours to divide. Others can take up to 30 hours to divide. Either way, the new spindle forms for the cells. Nucleus breaks down for each of the two cells that are entering the next phase of division. It will then Go through metaphase two, where the chromosomes line up at the equator. But this time in anaphase, the chromatids will move to the opposite poles of the cell. These sister chromatids are moving to the opposite poles, and you can see the genetic variation that occurred during the first prophase. From there, telophase is entered, where the nuclear envelope forms, creates the proteins needed for the cleavage furrow to develop, and separate these into four distinct haploid cells with half the DNA of the original diploid cell. Again, in humans, it is the female that has an egg. The other three cells are called polar bodies as the human female focuses all the efforts onto one of these cells, 
called the egg. The males, however, have four separate distinct sperm from this meiosis division. So let's review meiosis. How sex cells are made to create a new organism. We start with that diploid cell. The homologous chromosomes are from each parent in the original cells, and in that first prophase, you'll see the crossing over occur. Then through a process of two divisions, you end up with four haploid Close this cells. out with a quick review side by side of mitosis and meiosis. Thank you, Mrs. B, for doing an amazing drawing. She has notated here a haploid cell has half the number of chromosomes with the letter N. A diploid cell will be shown as 2N with the total chromosomes. C stands for chromatids. So when you see 2C, the sister chromatids are the exact copies of a chromosome. In mitosis, we see this cell entering prophase, metaphase, anaphase pulls them to the opposite poles, telophase with the cytokinesis ending up with an exact copy of what you started with. In meiosis, you start with that diploid cell, you go through the first prophase where the crossing over occurs, shown on this right side here, again with capital letters and lowercase letters to show you how the genetic variation occurs. And then through a process of two divisions, you end up with just one of the chromatids and one set of the chromosomes for the letter N, creating haploid cells. These are called sex cells. If you have any questions, as always, your teachers are available on Zoom. Have a great day.